to do the most important question in my eyes in A-level maths. Um, it was the hardest question I think that's ever been asked. I think the total marks for this was 15. Um, and back in the day, I think, I can't remember exactly, I think it's a 10 year old question. Um, they asked it, it was a huge question, not many students got it right. Um, I remember being an A-level student. Did I see this as an A-level student? I think I might have been tutoring at this point when I was at university. And I remember the question like this really stumped me and I was just like, I ended up getting it, but I think my working wasn't great. Um, and my explanations weren't great. It was an incredibly tough question. So let's see how we go. It says water is pouring into a long vertical cylinder at a constant rate of 2400 centimeters cubed per second and leaking out of a hole at the base of the cylinder at a rate proportional to the square root of the height of the water already in the cylinder. The cylinder has a constant cross-sectional area of 4,800 centimeters squared. Show that if H is the height of the water in the cylinder in centimeters at time t seconds, then dH by dt equals a half minus B root H, where B is a positive constant. In a nutshell, the first thing we identify is that this is a water in versus water out question. So we say first, what is going in and what is coming out. Now, what's going in, it says 2400 centimeters cubed per second. And that's a volume, right? We can see that it's centimeters cubed per second. So dV by dt is 2400. Then we have a leaking out situation. What is coming out? It says water is leaking out at a rate proportional, so proportional, to the square root of the height of the water already in the cylinder. So we can rewrite this as dv by dt equals k root h. So now we can do the net, the net dv by dt. Remember, the net dv by dt is what's going in minus what's going out. Okay, so we got the net dv by dt, but you can see that they want dh by dt. They want dh by dt. And as soon as I say want, that should trigger something in your head, yeah? Because we've said it many times now, that if we want dh by dt, and we have got dv by dt, we are using the want got need formula. Yeah, so we're saying want dh by dt, that equals what have we got? We have got dv by dt times what do we need? Well, we need a dh on top and dv on the bottom. We need to differentiate the volume of a cylinder. And this is part of the question which stumped a lot of students because the first thing they always wrote down was that the uh, volume Let's go here, that the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. Now differentiating that is really difficult. In fact, it's impossible because we want dv by dh, right? But that formula is in terms of r and we don't know what r is. But they do tell you something in the question which is really significant, the cross-sectional area. Now the cross-sectional area of a cylinder is a circle. Now that circle is the pi r squared. So the volume of this cylinder is not pi r squared h, it's 4800 h, which means we can differentiate this nice and easy. dv by dh is just 4800. So now we can sub back in and we can say dh by dt is dv by dt 2400 minus k root h. And then we're timesing that by dh dv, which is 1 over 4800. But obviously, if we're going to times it by 4800, then we need to protect it with a bracket. Then we need to expand this in. Now, 2400 times 1 over 4800, well, that's a half. 
minus. Now here you're doing k, the unknown number, times 1 over 4800. Well, that's an unknown number. So we just write as b, like the question. And there we go, we have shown that. Already, imagine that being in an exam question. Students are already being thrown off, yeah? That's not an easy want, got, need question, yeah? Particularly for, that would be regarded as a very difficult want, not want, got, need question for an exam, yeah? Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're new here and you want more maths content, then please consider subscribing. If you're learning something, then hit that like button and comment down below to let me know what you want to learn next. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. What's next? The cylinder was initially empty, and when the height of the water in the cylinder reached 16 centimeters, water was leaking out of the hole at the rate of 120. Show clearly that dh by dt then is 80 minus root h over 160. So this is now asking us to find what b is. Yeah, you can see in their answer they don't have b. We need to use the information in the question to work out what b is. Keep in mind they've not solved anything either. They're literally working with rates. But what do they tell us? They say when the height of water is 16, it says water is leaking out, so water is leaking out at a rate of 120. So what does that mean in, in math? So when h is 16, but also we have to be specific that this is the out version. They're talking about the out dv by dt is 120. So we need to go back and see where were we talking about the out. The out was over here. dv by dt equals k root h. So dv by dt is k root h. And now we can make our substitutions. 120 equals k root 16. Root 16 is 4. 120 divided by 4 is 30. Yeah, now k equals 30, but we are trying to find what b is, right? Well, we can go back to find out where did we even get b from. It came from this part, right? It came from here. So we can basically do this step again. Yeah, um, just replacing k as 30, really. So we can say dv by dt is now also because that's in a bracket and it's timesing by 1 over 4800 we could put that 4800 in the denominator so we can say it's 2400 minus k root h but k is now 30 root h all over 4800 then the last step is can you see there's no coefficient of root h so we can just divide everything by 30. we get that then it says part C, use the substitution u equals 80 minus root h to find that integral. Okay, so integrate 1 over 80 minus root h dh with u being 80 minus root h. We have 1 over u, right? So this becomes into a 1 over u. But we need to change dh into du. And we do that by differentiating. Now, in my opinion, if we want d, so we want dh in terms of du. Because you want dh in terms of du, I recommend that we just rearrange this for h because then we will get dh. So swapping, we get root h is 80 minus u, and then you square both sides. Now we can do dh by du. So we've all done substitution now together. Remember, we differentiate the angle. 80 minus u differentiates to minus 1 times bring down the power, knock 1 off the power. So you times through by du. So there is dh in terms of du. So it's minus 2, 80 minus u, du. So minus 2 integral at minus u all over u du. Now the question is, how do we integrate 
80 minus u over u. I want to keep it as um, fractions. So the other way is you just split the fraction. So 80 over u, then u divided by u is 1, right? Okay. 80 over u, what does that integrate to? What does 80 over u integrate to? So we have 80 ln u, and then 1 integrates to u. Then you can just put plus c. Then you multiply the minus 2 in. Now here, this substitution has no limits, so we need to convert back to h. So you get minus 160 ln of u, which is 80 minus root h. Uh, minus 2 times minus u is plus 2u, uh, 80 minus root h plus c. Now we can actually take this further, you lot. We can multiply this in, and we get minus 160 ln of 80 minus root h. Then we get that 2 times 80 is 160 minus 2 root h plus c. And then you can combine the constants. 160 plus an unknown number is an unknown number. So you get minus 160 ln of 80 minus root h, minus 2 root h. Then 160 plus c is just another constant. We could just say plus d. Okay, last part. Solve the differential equation in part b to find to the nearest minute the time it takes to fill the cylinder from empty to a height of 4. So from part b, it was just dh by dt is 80 minus root h over 160. So dh by dt was 80 minus root h over 160. Multiply by dt. Now when we multiply by dt, we have to protect the numerator, which means to get the h's onto the left side, we need to go to protect the fraction. And to get to the other side, we need to divide by 80 minus root h. So we get min uh, 1 over 80 minus root h dh is 1 over 160 dt. Now, for what I'm about to do, you have to make sure that what's on this side is just a constant. So 1 over 160 or k or a or whatever. It cannot be a function of t. So if this said equal t dt or t squared dt, anything that is a function of t, what I'm about to do will not work. You would have to integrate both sides, introduce the plus c, then you would have to um, go ahead and find the constant and then solve. But because that's a constant, that 1 over 160, we can do what I'm about to show you. We can integrate both sides. Now the right side is easy. Yeah, that's just 1 over 160t. Yeah. But in the question, it wants us to find the time for the cylinder to fill from empty to 4. Yeah. So what you're doing is you're actually finding an area. You're finding an area from empty to four. What does the empty, meaning zero and four, how is that represented in an integral? Now they have to be put in the limits of h because they're talking about h. So between zero and four. Another thing to double check is to make sure the units are. I nearly made a big mistake there. You see it says we're doing everything in centimeters. They nearly tricked us here. That's not four, that's 400. You see how many small things in this question, these lot have tried to mess us up. Now, the great thing about this is we know what the left side integrates to. So we put a square bracket, minus 160 ln of 80 minus root h, minus two root h, now we do not need plus d anymore because we are dealing with bounds. And then the right side is just 1 over 160 t. We want t, isn't it? We can times both sides by 160 as well. And this is then going to be our answer. We just need to work out what the limits are. And then we need to convert it to minutes because I think time is in, yeah, it's in seconds, isn't it? 
So we have to keep in mind this time is in seconds. All right, quickest way to input our numbers, and that equals t, yeah? So all I need to type in the calculator is 160 bracket b minus c. So t seconds is, and there's our answer in seconds. But we want in minutes. So we just divide that by 60. So to the nearest minute is 16 minutes. There you go, that is your answer. Wow, that's a crazy question. And believe me, that was a past exam question. That is a past exam question.